The Z domain is said to be the discrete version of the Laplace or S domain. This video attempts to show visually the relationship between the two domains in the context of systems impulse response analysis. A continuous system is said to be stable if all system poles lie on the left hand side of the S plane, while the Z plane counterpart region is inside the unit circle for discrete systems. All points inside these grey regions are associated with systems whose impulse responses decay or reduce over time. Every point in both planes is associated with an oscillating frequency and exponential growth or decay. The DC points shown are associated with 0 Hz and 0 growth or decay, in other words just a constant value. The yellow counterpart points being drawn are associated with the impulse responses that neither grow or decay over time. As the yellow points drawn move away from the DC points, the associated oscillating frequency increases. The red points are similar to the yellow ones, but are associated with negative frequencies rather than positive frequencies. The points being drawn now are associated with impulse responses that grow over time, which indicate system instability. These points are associated with impulse responses that decay or reduce over time. Once again, oscillating frequency is increasing up to the last points drawn, which are associated with the Nyquist frequency. The green counterpart points are all associated with constant frequency of oscillation. Once they cross the yellow line, the points are associated with impulse responses that grow over time. These dark green points are similar, with the rate of decay or growth increasing the further the points are from the yellow line. Let's consider what happens to the mappings between counterpart points for increasing sampling frequencies. The Nyquist frequency remains fixed at the position minus 1 on the z-plane, but moves away from the origin on the s-plane. We'll need to zoom in around the DC point on the z-plane to see what's happening more clearly, with a greater vertical zoom near the end. I'm sure you can appreciate that these visualizations of the S and Z plane would be very similar if the sampling frequency was to continue to increase towards infinity. It's worth noting that the spacing of the colored lines along the horizontal axis is not the same since the mapping is logarithmic. This is why the DC point of S equal to 0 maps to the Z plane position of Z equal to 1.